Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Shushma Singh. Today, we start Unit 2, Plateau. Let us have introduction about the unit. Plato, a Greek philosopher, is one of the most creative, influential thinkers in political philosophy. A great deal of writings on Plato has appeared from time to time. Some have described Plato as the real intellectual founder of Christianity, a Christian before Christ, while others of Marxian socialism. With some, Plato is a revolutionary, a radical at that, with others, a reactionary, a fascist at that. Plato's modern critics include C. M. Bora, W. Fitt, A. D. Winspear, and Karl Popper and its enemy. Plato's admirers include Roland R. Levinson and June Wilde. The descriptive and interpretive and yet sympathetic account of Plato can be found in Ernest Barker and Richard Lavis' Nettleship. This is merely a brief reading of works on and about Plato intended to introduce the great philosopher. Political philosophy in the West begins with the ancient Greeks and Plato. Inheriting a rich tradition of political speculation became its first embodiment. Plato was an idealist for he laid down the basis for political idealism in the West. He was a philosopher for he had seen the forms beyond those which could be seen as appearances. He was a rationalist for he gave his philosophy a definite vision. He was a revolutionary for he attempted to build a new and novel fabric on the ruins of the society around. Obviously, in the process, Plato drifted away from the prevailing system and was thus consequently damned as utopian, impracticable, idealist, and the like. Plato's place in Western political thought would always remain unparalleled. Numerous idealists regard Plato as their teacher and they feel great in calling themselves his disciples. Some admire Plato while others condemn him, but none dare ignore him. It is here where Plato's greatness lies. He was indeed the idealist among the idealists, the artist among the artists, the philosopher among the philosophers and the revolutionary among the revolutionaries. Now we are introducing Plato, his times and his works. First of all, we talk about his times. Plato, an aristocrat by both birth and temperament, was born in democratic Athens. At a time, when it was engaged in a deadly war against Sparta. The fellow Phoenician war, the war lasted for about 28 years and resulted in the fall of Athens. On his father's side, Plato traced his descent from Codrus, the last of the tribal kings of 
Africa or even from the god Poseidon and on the mother's side from that of the Solon, the great law giver. Plato was a child when his father Ariston died and his mother Paris Kilioni married Philelemps, an associate of Parisel, the statesman. As a young man, Plato had political ambitions, but he became a discipline of Socrates, accepting his basic philosophy and dialectical style of debate, the pursuit of truth through discussions and dialogues. In fact, Plato was disillusioned the way things were going around. He was invited to join public life when the Spartan puppet government, the rule of 30, was established in 404 BC and where his maternal uncles, Caritikas, and Charmides were members of that group. Plato declined the offer because he was disappointed by the functioning of the political leadership in general and by his distinguishing experience of the two successive governments in particular, first by the rule of 30 and later by the returned democratic faction the former entrapping Socrates on charges of corrupting the youth and the later executing him on charges of impiety. All this convinced Plato that all politics are evil if not given proper management and direction. Plato himself writes in the seventh letter supposed to be his biography, saying, eager though I had been at first to go into politics, as I looked at these things, the course of political life in the city-state and saw everything taking any course at all with no direction or management. I ended by feeling dizzy, but at last I saw that as far all states now existing are concerned, they are all badly governed, for the condition of their laws is bad almost past cure, except for some miraculous accident. So, I was compelled to say in praising true philosophy that it was from it alone that one was able to discern all true justice, private as public. And so, I said that all the nations of men will never cease from private trouble until either the true and genuine breed of philosophers shall come to political office or until that of the rulers in the states shall by some divine ordinance take to the true pursuit of philosophy. After Socrates' execution in 399 BC, Plato fearing for his own safety and in all disillusionment set himself for long travels temporarily abroad to Italy, Cilicia and Egypt. In 388 BC, Plato after his return to Athens founded the academy, 
the institution often described as the first European university. It provided a comprehensive curriculum, including such subjects as astronomy, biology, political theory, philosophy, and mathematics. Inscribing on the very gate of the academy about mathematics, those having no knowledge of mathematics need not enter here. Pursuing an opportunity to combine philosophy and practical politics, Plato went to Sicily in 367 to tutor the new ruler of Syracuse, Dinosaurus, the younger in the art of philosophical rule. The experiment failed. Plato made another attempt to Syracuse again in 361 BC. But once again, he met with a failure. The last years of Plato's life were spent lecturing at the academy and in writing. Plato died at about the age of 80 in Athens in 348 or 347 BC, leaving the management of the academy to specific pus his nephew. Now let us talk about his works. Plato's writings were in dialogue form and the hero in all writings except in the laws were none but his teacher, Socrates. In the dialogue type writing, philosophical ideas were advanced, discussed and criticized in the context of the conservative or debate involving two or more persons. The collection of Plato's work includes 35 dialogues and 13 letters, though doubts are cast on the authenticity of a few of them. The dialogues may be divided into early, middle and later periods of composition. The earliest represent Plato's attempt to communicate the philosophy and dialogical style of Socrates. Several of these dialogues take the same form. Socrates encountering someone who claims to know much professes to be ignorant and seeks assistance from the one who knows. As Socrates begins to raise questions, it begins, however, clear that the one reputed to be wise really does not know. What he claims to know and the Socrates emerges as the wiser one because he at least knows that he does not know. Such knowledge of course is the beginning of wisdom. Included in this group of dialogues are charmedies, an attempt to define temperance, lysis, a discussion of friendship, leeches, a pursuit of the meaning of courage, progress, a defense of the thesis that virtue is knowledge and can be taught, euthopro, a consideration of the nature of pity, and book one of the republic, a discussion of justice. The middle and the late dialogue of the Plato reflect his own philosophical development. Most scholars attribute the ideas in these works to Plato himself, though Socrates continue to be the main character in many of the dialogues. The writings of the middle period include Garhis, a consideration of several ethical questions. Manu, a discussion of the nature of knowledge, the apology, society's defense of himself as his trial against the charges of 
atheism and corrupting athenian youth crito through half finished to socrates defense of obedience to the laws of the state phaedo the death scene of socrates in which he discusses the theory of forms the nature of soul and the question of immortality the symposium plato's outstanding dramatic achievement which also contains several speeches on beauty and love the republic plato's supreme philosophical achievement which is also a detailed discussion of the nature of justice the works of the later period include the statesman the theoretics a denial that knowledge is to be identified with sense perception prominence a critical evolution of the theory of forms sophist further consideration of the theory of ideas or forms philobus a discussion of relationship between pleasure and the good timas plato's views on nat- natural science and cosmology and the laws a more practical analysis of political and social issues of all his writings the republic written over a period of plato's early life as a writer though finished around the year about 386 bc he established his academy the statement written about the year 360 bc and the laws published after his death in 347 bc and the written a couple of months earlier may be said to have contained his entire political philosophy the republic of plato is by all means the greatest of all his works it is not only a treatise on politics but is also a treatise dealing with every aspect of human life it in fact deals with the metaphysics the idea of the good moral philosophy virtue of human soul education the scientific training the rulers ought to have politics the ideal state the philosophy of history the process of historical change from the ideal state to tyrannical regime economy communism of property and families all combined in one the republic has 10 books whose subject matter can be summed up as under book 1 deals with man's life nature of justice and morality book 2 to 4 explain the organization of state and of the system of education here plato lays down the features of good man and ideal society stating three elements in human nature appetite spirit and reason and their corresponding characteristics in the ideal state the producer the auxiliaries the rulers book 5 to 7 while stating the organization of the ideal state refer to such a system based on communalism of families and property and headed by the philosopher rulers book 8 and 9 tells us how anarchy and chaos visit when the individuals and the states get perverted book 10 has two parts part 1 relates to philosophy to art and part 2 discusses the capacity of the soul the statement and the laws deal more with the actual states and ground realities and as such 
do not have the same idealism and radical overturn which the republic possessed plateau of the republic is what is known to the world the idealist the philosopher and the radical now we are going to discuss his methodology it is usually said that plato's methodology was deductive also called the philosophical method the philosopher while following his, this methodology has his preconceived conclusions and then seeks to see them in actual conditions around them general principles are determined first and thereafter are related to particular situation the deductive method of investigation stands opposite to the inductive one where the conclusions are reached after studying observing and examining the data available at hand plato it is said followed the deductive method in so far as he attempted to find the characteristic features of the state he founded in his imagination in the existing conditions prevailing in the city state of the ancient greek society obviously he did not find what he had imagined and that was why he felt dizziness that plato's methodology is deductive is an important aspect but it is at the same time an amalgam of numerous methodology is something more important a fact if one seeks to understand plato natureship is the opinion that plato's methodology is inductive as well for a uh, it relates theory with practical the fact is that plato follows a variety of methods in expressing his political thought plato's methodology is dialectical for dialect has been a tradition with the ancient greeks socrates followed this methodology in responding to the views of his rivals by highlighting fallacies in their thinking but plato following his teacher socrates pursued this methodology in his search for the idea of good and the way it could be reached in the process he was not imparting knowledge as much as he was trying to explain how the people could achieve it themselves by following the dialectical method plato discussed the views of numerous individuals examined each such view and ultimately reached the conclusion plato's notion of justice was the result of debate which went on among actors such as sapphles polemarchus and theramachus glaucon and adamnes a dialectical method of reaching true meaning of justice plato's methodology is anal analytical in so far as he divided a phenomena into its possible parts analyzing each part fully and thereafter knitting the results of all parts together he see in plato's an analytical mind while he talked about what constitutes human nature appetite spirit and reason he found these elements in body politic as well appetite in the producing class spirit in the soldier class and the reason in the ruling class thus stating that the constituents of the ideal states are producers who provide the material base soldiers 
who provide the military base and the rulers who provide the rational base. Proper provision, proper protection and proper leadership as CL Vapor calls them. There is also a teleological method in Plato's thinking. Teleology means the object with an objective. It follows that every phenomena exists for itself and keeps moving towards its desired goal. Plato's teleological approach can well be seen in his theory of forms. Plato was convinced that what appears is the shallow of what it can be. Form is the best of what we see realities can attain their forms. Plato is known for having pursued the deductive method of examining any phenomena and also expressing his philosophy. He following the deductive methodology had had his preconceived conclusions and on their basis constructed his ideal state. Explaining how it would be organized and what characteristic features it would have. The Republic was nothing but the creation of his deductive method. Analogy as a method has also been followed by Plato in his philosophy. Analogy means a form of reasoning in which one thing is inferred to be similar to another thing in a certain respect on the basis of non-similarity in other respects. There is a clear analogical method in Plato's, a method pursued by Socrates who found analogy in his thought processes by taking recourse to the realms of arts. Plato saw such analogies in the realms of the material world. For the producers of his ideal state, Plato used the word human cattle, the copper or the bronze. For the soldiers, he used the word the watchdogs or the silver. For the rulers, the shepherd and the gold. Such analogies are too common in Plato. Plato pursued the historical method as well. His statesmen and the laws have been written by following the historical methodology wherein he traced the evolution and growth of numerous types of state historically. Even in the Republic, Plato did not lose sight of history. He found the solution of all evils prevailing in the then city-state in history. Furthermore, the Republic, Barker tells us, is not only a deductive from the first principles, it is also an inductive from the fact of Greek life, meaning thereby that it is based on actual conditions existing then. Here we want to wind up today's lecture. Thank you so much for your attention.